Welcome back to the Consciously Curious Goes Global radio show. This is Peggy Sue Skipper, and we come at you live every Wednesday from noon to 2 p.m. right here on LocalLiveRadio.com at LocalLiveHouston.com. Um, so, uh, you know, every year I make a deal with myself. I don't really do New Year's resolutions, but, I, but I, every year I try to think of something I can do during that year that either I've never done before or... That scares me to do, <laughs> you know. So one year, and this is probably going back six or seven years ago, um, I decided that one of the things I needed to do was was sort of tap into my uh, the actress within me, so I could get better at public speaking. And so I went to Leisure Learning, which is a an organization most Houstonians know that have all kinds of workshops and classes. And I found a place called the Self Expression Center. And they had a class called Acting for Non-Actors. So I thought, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step up to the plate and I'm going to do this. Because it sounds like fun and I can kind of cover my bases on what I promised to myself. Mm -hmm. And it was a great, great mm -hmm. um, workshop. And I am delighted to have with me today the woman who founded and runs the Self-Expression Center here in Houston. Her name is Sandra Zimmer. Welcome, Sandra. Hi, Peggy. Yeah. And you are also one of the featured speakers for the 2013 Metaphysical and Healing Expo, which is January 19th and 20th. I am, thanks to Teresa Beatty. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be an amazing gathering. But the Self-Expression Center, first of all, I love that name. Mm, thank and I you. Think it's, I think it's very, <laughs> uh, I mean, it just says a lot. I mean, come in here and express yourself, right? Yeah. So I just want to ask you first, what got you on that kind of path to help people in that way? Well, I think, I think it's been part of my own journey, my own transformational journey. I d grew up in a household that did not express and I was compelled to try to learn to do that. And the way that I was drawn to do it initially was through acting. So I, I studied acting, thinking I was going to learn to be somebody. I mean, really, that was my thought process. If I, if I become an actress, I will be somebody. And so that tells you who I was, and I didn't know who I was. Right. So I, I did a, a master's degree in acting after a after a degree in psychology, a master's degree in acting, and, and I was good at it but not great. And so because I wasn't great, I knew that I wasn't going to be a major film star or Broadway star. So I began to look for ways to utilize my psychology, my acting, and also... I had a doctorate in esoteric philosophy. so <laughs> Well, how do we put all those together, how, right? <laughs> how do I put all of that together? And, of course, I started by teaching acting, but it evolved because I had all of these deeper um, kinds of processes and awarenesses. It, in order for it to please me, it had to go deeper. It had to become transformational. So my acting classes became acting for non-actors became a transformational process, still using, you know, really clear, um, good acting skills and techniques, but taking it more into self-awareness and using the acting as a way of expressing self. And little by little, it turned into a center and expanded into a whole different range of classes, including public speaking. Right. And, and I think I've heard it said, and I believe this, that the best actors, the really great actors, aren't pretending anything. They're pulling up from within themselves mm -hmm. what they need to play the mm -hmm. part because we all have everything within us. Mm -hmm. And so it's that ability to allow whatever that is mm -hmm. within you to come up mm -hmm. and express itself mm -hmm. in that character. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's sort of like the difference between being in the zone mm -hmm. or just playing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, now you're talking my language. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it's so true, and I think that's true in our lives as well, because you know, all the world's a stage, right? So, what part are we playing, and how are we playing it, mm -hmm. and what results are we getting from that? I think mm -hmm. that's very important. So now you have what you call transformational speaking. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? I mean, I, I can guess, but I want mm -hmm. you to share your viewpoint on that. Well, transformational speaking is a style of speaking 
that is basically authentic to you. So a style of speaking in front of groups or presentations, whatever, that is based on being who you are as a person instead of who you think you should be as a presenter. Mm -hmm. It allows you, as I teach it and work with it, it allows people to become a kind of instrument through which spirit can speak. So it is transformational in the sense that that as a speaker, you transform your listeners, not so much by what you're saying as who you're being and, and as through the energy that you allow to flow through you and out to them. And the cool thing is that you also transform yourself. You as speaker right. transform yourself in the process as a result of that energy that you are allowing to open up and flow through you and out to them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very rich experience of learning to speak from soul. Right. And, you know, I think there's a basic energetic, universal energetic law mm -hmm. and that comes to play in this. So if you are being your authentic self and you're mm -hmm. speaking from that place mm -hmm. and you're speaking your own truth and you're speaking to a crowd of people, well, let's just, for example, say you're speaking to 50 people um, about what you do. You may lose 45 of them because they don't resonate with what you're saying. But if five of them just get it, then those five are likely to become good clients if you're trying, if you're... You know, and I'm not saying you want to lose your whole audience. All I'm saying is you never quite know who your audience is. So instead of adjusting to your audience, you know, if you just be yourself, if you just speak authentically, then the, those that resonate with you will find you. You yeah. will draw those who are attracted to who you are and what you have to offer. Right. And you may not lose the others. You may touch the others. When, when you are speaking from a, a zone state, mm -hmm. a transformational state, when you're really opened up at the heart level and allowing your spirit to flow through you and out to them, you may touch all 50 of those people, but you may only sell five of them. Right. And so this is the same principle in any kind of sales. That's very true. From my standpoint, because I also coach people for sales kinds of, you know, presentations, persuasion. You you have to be willing to allow those who resonate with you, who need you to be drawn, and let the others go. Right. Exactly. Maybe they will have gotten something from listening to you speak, but not necessarily going to sign up for your program, whatever your program is. Well, they might come back to you later. Later on. You know, might be just planting or seeds. Or send people to you. Yeah, exactly, yes. Now, that's not right for me, but I, oh, my cousin Betsy, mm -hmm. and, you know, she, she would just really resonate with that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her about it. That's mm -hmm. absolutely true. But I think that it does come back to, in anything you do, just that authentic self. yeah. Right. And so what do you think is the biggest stumbling block that, that most people have to, to getting to that place? Well, they say the number one fear of Americans is fear of public speaking. After death. There's a reason for that, because when you become the center of attention, your body opens up a flow of energy. You could call it psychophysical energy or... Um, soul energy, but there is a natural flow of energy that starts buzzing through the body when you become the center of attention. And it's powerful, and it feels out of control until you learn how to ride it. So most people will judge that energy coming up in their body as fear, mm -hmm. and they will judge themselves for having fear, and then they will clamp down on it. And any time you clamp down or freeze the flow of energy, in your body, it's going to turn into tension and anxiety. It's going to cause your body even to shake sometimes. So I, I have a very different perspective about fear of public speaking. I see it as potential, mm -hmm. as energy that is trying to open up and flow through the body. And when you learn how to relax down into your body and let that energy flow through you, it actually flows through you. It begins to fill the room with a kind of presence. And it, it 
you know, eases right down into the hearts and the souls of your listeners, and it touches them. You literally touch people with your presence because you are so opened up. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, again, back to that, you can touch all kinds of people, whether they buy from you or not, whether right. they sign on for your program. So I'm, I'm getting a little off track here, but the deal is that what people call fear of public speaking, my research in 24 years tells me it's being, in a sense, mislabeled. And everybody is buying into this. Almost everybody thinks it's fear. And I'm saying it's spiritual juice. Mm -hmm. And it could be excitement. It's excitement. And when you learn to relax into it, you tap it, and it becomes uh, an energy that you use to create genuine emotional connection with listeners. Mm -hmm. Makes perfect sense to me. And what's cool about this from a a learning-to-speak standpoint for those of people who are coming to the the Metaphysical and Healing Expo, is that people who are already on a spiritual, metaphysical path are already in the process of opening up, which means that it's very easy for them to transform tension of being the center of attention. That's what I call it, the tension of being the center of attention. It's much easier for someone like that to learn to relax into it, and they become incredible speakers. They literally radiate a presence, a light from the the podium, from standing in front of the group. Makes perfect sense to me. In fact, one of the, it's sort of, it's in a, very much in alignment with what I'm talking about for this whole energy that we're into now in 2013, which is, um, I, I tell people the most important thing that we can do right now for ourselves is to make sure that we're living our life in the way that feels good to us rather than how it looks to other people. Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing you're talking about Mm -hmm. with speaking. Mm, Big time. If if you've got to make sure that it's feeling good to you. Not looking good. Not necessarily looking good or looking right or proper or whatever that is uh, in other people's minds. Um, And that is what is so different about the way that I teach people public speaking. Traditional public speaking trainings focus on external mechanics, trying to make you look good on the outside, look perfect. Mm -hmm. But all that does is make somebody more tense because they get so focused on trying to do it right Mm -hmm. externally that they can't be real from the inside. And so, you know, it can look kind of dynamic and, and look good, but it won't feel good from the inside of the speaker, and it won't feel good to the audience. Right. It may make sense to them. Absolutely. Mentally. And they may be impressed by right. the style, right. but not touched. And right. I, I'm after something richer with my speaking mm-hmm. clients. Mm-hmm. I'm after that sense of authenticity, being able to get into that zone where they literally are a kind of instrument through which their soul is speaking. Mm-hmm. Their truth. Their truth. Yes, I love that. I love that. And so, like anything else, it's a process. Mm-hmm. And I was I was talking the other day um, to I can't even remember who I was talking to, but we were talking about people being mechanically very very good at what they do, mm-hmm. but missing the spark mm-hmm. that makes it different, mm-hmm. and how maybe mm. you know if you, like that yeah if if you what is it makes people different people who are really stars right who really the shine je ne sais quoi. the shine mm-hmm. that comes from people who are being very authentic right but we're not taught to do that in our society sandra no and public speaking is sort of the last stronghold mm. people still are thinking of public speaking as a performance Right. And they're still learning it and teaching it as a performance. I'm interested in a beingness. I'm interested in a style of speaking that allows you to be with people instead of perform for them. Right. Well, but it's good to learn. Boy, I could argue both sides of this. Sure. I hate it when I get into situations like this. But I, I was going to say it's good to learn some techniques, the mechanical techniques, so that you don't ramble, you know, da 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 da, da. But what, I, what I like to say is a little bit of structure and a lot of flow 
Oh, there you go. I like that. Um, yes, you need to have a little bit of structure. Uh, let me take a step back. This is what I've discovered. I've been doing this for 24 years, working with stage fright and fear of public speaking and training people to really shine when they speak. Um, where am I going with this? I just lost my train. <laughs> well, we were talking about being in the flow and the mechanic, have a little bit of structure. What happens is that when people get opened up to speak, they get opened up at the center of attention. Their, their ideas, their insights, the highest thoughts just bubble up to the surface They're, because there's no resistance anymore. They're not protecting right. anything. So it just flows out very freely. That energy, in a sense, sort of takes over the body. Mm -hmm. And the body begins to move and gesture and the voice because everything is coming from that pure essence of the self. You don't have to have so much mechanical technique when you're authentic, when you're opened up. Mm -hmm. You can use a little bit of mechanics, you know, just to sort of tweak the style. But honestly, you don't need a lot. What you need is a little bit of structure to your talk. Well, so I, it used to be you always heard, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. That's a structure. So is that still a, a valid structure sure. for people? Okay. Absolutely. It's a valid structure. It's not my favorite one because it's so linear. My favorite one is story, lesson, point. Okay. That I'm interested in crafting messages that are very compelling and persuasive and really emotionally juicy. And... Information alone is not that. Right. So what you need is you need an idea, a point, but you need a story, something that happened that pertains to that, that illustrates that, that makes it really emotional for people. And the lesson learned from the story experience, and when you put story, lesson, point together, that structure is so easy for people to grab a hold of. Once they're opened up and they're comfortable and connecting, that just comes out of people like nothing. It's just right. like falling especially off of a log. A, if, especially if it's a real story. Of course, you know? a real story. Because mm -hmm. after all, we're looking for authenticity, so the stories have to be real. Right. That makes perfect sense. Hmm. Okay, so can you give us some examples from your clients? I mean... I what mean, happens for people? Right, mm, yes. I can. I've got several. Give us a story. Okay, here's a story. We need to story. have a story. Well, my, my favorite all-time story is Tyrone Moncrief. He's a criminal defense attorney in Houston. Now, Tyrone showed up on my doorstep way back in the beginning, about 1991, and he learned the what I call the speaking from the heart or the Zimmer method techniques. He took that into the courtroom. He pretty much wins all the time. But then he decided to test his speaking skills. He entered an international speech competition in 1995 for the first time. So he went to Washington, D.C. and competed against 75 other speakers from all around the globe, many of whom had competed multiple times. Tyrone won the whole thing the first time out. Wow. He won it, and not because he had better material or better stories, but because he was very present, very connected on a soul level. He said he felt at one with the whole audience and the judges. And so his... His talk was transformational, and he has used these techniques over the years. This past July, he spoke at the Harvard Law School, where, again, he had an utterly amazing experience of transforming his audience there at Harvard. Again, he, he connected on such a soul level that he felt at one with them. He was able to take them somewhere emotionally. Um, you know, he's always just such um, uh, a student of, you know, such pride for me. Yeah. This past year, I worked with um, a man named Casey Davis. Casey is uh, works for a medical supply equipment, endoscopy equipment company. And when he called me in March, he said, I am so afraid I'm going to win this, uh, the Salesperson of the Year Award. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win it, but I don't want to win it because I'm going to have to give a talk <laughs> at the award ceremony. So I, I better get ready for it. So, you know, we, he went through my group classes, and we did a little coaching. And 
just um, three months ago, in fact, he did win the award. He gave a talk to 400 of his of the company employees, including the senior leaders. He said it was the best night of his life. Uh-huh. People were crying. Oh, I got crying. a spiritual orgasm on that. They were cheering. They were shouting, crying. And people who knew that he was a, had been afraid were just astounded at what he did. That, now that's a good story. That's a good story. Yeah. I had and a, there are tons of them. Yeah. Well, and so it's, and it really is about getting people through whatever that fear is for them mm-hmm. or what, making them understand that that fear could be excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, transforming it. I call it transforming stage fright into authentic presence. Because literally, energetically, that's what we're doing. What we're feeling as fear and anxiety, and is we create tension in the body around, is energy trying to flow through. And through a set of processes that I take people through, <laughs> that energy opens up, kind of drains out, and begins to get into a flow state. So the body is in a flow state of presence, and then you can start to learn to speak. That makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> I'm Actually, so glad I make sense. Well, yeah. It only took me about 20 years to figure <laughs> this out. <laughs> well, and quite frankly, everything you're saying pertains to life as yes. well as speaking. Of I mean, course. it's all the same principles. Of course. It's just how, where are you going to apply the principles? Exactly. Where are you going to be conscious enough yeah. to realize, oh, the principles may <laughs> apply here too? Well, you know, I. It, it is such a miracle to me that I am teaching public speaking because I was so terrified. I was terrified to be the center of attention. I would shake like a leaf when I, and and even though I wanted to be an actress, you know, I was just so scared. So to have evolved into a speaker and a teacher of public speaking is in one lifetime. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But don't we all often end up teaching the very things that we We're need to... We're here to we learn. To, yeah, exactly. I am the epitome of that. Yes, because we can say to other people, well, let me tell you how I handled that, <laughs> you know? Well, and that's why I'm so good at this, frankly, because I had to wrestle with it. I'm not a natural speaker. You know, I didn't, I'm not an extrovert. This did not come easy. I had to struggle with it. So I know what's happening internally to people in a way that somebody who's more a natural speaker... Mm-hmm really doesn't know how to work with yeah, like I do. I get that. And, and I I do get that because I, I don't really have much fear of Mm-mm. public speaking. You're an extrovert. I, well, but I wasn't all my life. I, I was very introverted as a child. So, and, I, and I had a huge shift at about 16 that changed mm-hmm. everything. But there's still that introverted part of me. But for some reason, public speaking has never, never frightened me, never... Mm-mm. I don't really have any nerves about that. Mm-hmm. Singing, however, mm-hmm. that, that's a whole different story. We were talking about that on the first half of the show. Well, singing is more intense than speaking because in singing, you have to have your body open because the body has to be vibrating in a certain way because the vocal instrument is a vibrating machine. If your body is all in contraction, then you can't vibrate properly to sing. Well, it's just as if you scrunched up the piano wires. Exactly. Makes perfect sense. So again, for for singing even more, you have to open up the flow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what do you see as, I mean, the Self-Expression Center has been around for a while, right? 20 years. Yeah. And you're on, you're just outside the Beltway off Richmond, mm-hmm. on Richmond, actually. Mm-hmm. On Richmond. Mm-hmm. So what do you see five years down the road for for your business, where would you like to be then? Um, or for you personally? I, you know, yeah. I, I am not, I don't have those kinds of uh, visions and goals. I wish I did. I, I, I truly kind of do it in the moment. But what I think I would like to have happen is these ideas that I have evolved over the last 24 years about fear of public speaking, about speaking, especially for introverts. I would like for some of these ideas to become more um, accepted. Uh, You know, I'd like for there to begin to be some transformation in the whole arena of public speaking. Because there is, in uh, you know, in psychology that that has opened up. 
uh, Brene Brown, if you know of her, is talking about authenticity and vulnerability. Um, and she's <laughs> getting four, four million hits on her, you know, TED Talk. I, you know, I'd like to have four million hits on my TED Talk when mm-hmm. I do it. Because I'd like those ideas, I, like, I would like for people to begin to be aware that fear of public speaking is not a sign that there's something wrong with you. It's a sign that there's something right, which is you are highly sensitive, and you have the potential to be brilliant as a speaker if you have stage fright, because that means you have energy that is up to the surface where it could be used to create genuine emotional connection with listeners. So maybe in five years I'd like to have those ideas more prominent. Well, I think that's already happening. I think I think that is a doable thing in five years, I- even less, because people are opening up and people are more and more realizing, thank you, that that they have the power to create their life in whatever they want, whatever mm-hmm. way they want to create it, and if we're going to take leaps in our lives, mm-hmm. whether it's personally or professionally. We have to find the arenas to test our personal courage. Mm -hmm. And And this is a great one. This is a great venue for transforming personal tension and fear. Because public speaking at at its essence is about learning to be who you are in front of others. And no matter what you do in life, no matter who you work for, no matter what you do, you can only go so far unless you can be who you are in front of others. Sooner or later, if you have a mission, a message, a healing modality, if you're a professional, sooner or later, as you rise to the top, you have to be able to speak in front of groups. So you have to be able to be who you are in front of other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one-on-one or in front of a thousand. It, that is the, the key element, it's right? It's an essential Life skill. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. In fact, I was talking to um, my group, the Consciously Curious, that meets every Thursday and telling them, uh, because we're thinking about establishing a Toastmasters group Mm -hmm. for the Consciously Curious, because I said, you know, all of us have a message. Every single person that comes to this group has an important message. Mm -hmm. And collectively, we have um, a mission to, to create awareness. And the, and the better we can say that, the quicker we can accomplish this. Mm-hmm. So exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do people, Liz, before we get, it gets away with us, because I get to talking and I forget, forget the important stuff, how do people get in touch with you? Well, they can visit my website, which is www.self-expression.com mm-hmm. so self-expression.com with a hyphen in it okay. they can call me at 281-293-7070 repeating 281-293-7070 I'm at Twitter I'm you know at Sandra Zimmer um, and I have a face a couple of Facebook pages Self-Expression Center is a Facebook page as well. Yeah. Well, now, <clears throat> I just my mind just went blank. That thought just leaked out of my well, left ear. That's a lovely place to fall into, isn't where, it? Though, where? Oh, your book. That's what I was going to say. Is, oh, I have a book. You have a book. I wrote a <laughs> book about all of this. It took me ten years to develop the process. Well, then we need to talk about it. And then ten years to write the book. The book is called "It's Your Time to Shine," okay. and it's subtitled "How to Overcome Fear of Public Speaking, um, Develop Authentic Presence, and Think and Speak from Your Heart." It's a long title. <laughs> long subtitle, anyway. It is a long yeah, subtitle. Yeah. It's your time to shine. It's at Amazon. It's at my website, available in on Kindle, lots of forms. Okay. So this might be a first step for people who are mm. interested in your work is to get the book get and the read book. that and then see how that resonates with them and maybe mm-hmm. take uh, another step to, to get involved personally. Now, do you still do the Acting for Non-Actors workshop? Oh, about once a year I teach Acting that for Non-Actors. That was such a great workshop. It, it is. I, it's, it's an extraordinary program, and it's a lot of fun. But what's, what's coming up next that relates to the expo is 
I'm going to be speaking about transformational speaking, and then I'm going to be offering a special workshop on transformational speaking for people who attend the expo. Okay. So, And it will be February 16th and 17th, and there's a special discount for people who are at the expo. So looking okay. forward to that. Great. That's awesome. Well, and as long as we're on that note... Um, if you don't get my newsletter, let me just tell you that speaking of specials for the Expo, the Expo tickets are $99. Mm-hmm. That's for two full days of speakers, vendors, table topic presenters at lunch both days. I mean, it's a great, it's a great, great value for your money. So that's $99. And I have committed that for everyone who's interested that buys an Expo ticket and shows me their receipt, I will do a full initial hand analysis session with them which is generally an hour and a half. Mm. It's normally $150, and I'll do it for $50 mm. so that you're getting your expo ticket for free. free. And and I have personally had a hand reading from you. We, oh. we share a, a great friendship with Richard Unger, yes. who was well, your teacher. Yes. And you are awesome at hand reading. And, oh, and I can tell people that it's really valuable information. Oh, thanks. Well, it's, it's the information that leads them down the path to finding their authentic self, mm-hmm. which... Um, Hello. Yeah. You know, all paths lead to the same place, <laughs> they right? They really do, don't they? <laughs> so so what, what else would you like people to know about you in the last few minutes that we've got here? Um, well, I have been quoting St. Catherine of Siena lately. Oh. I heard this quote. She was quoted as saying, Be who God meant you to be, and you can set the world on fire. Don't you love that? Be who God meant you to be, and you can set the world on fire. Mm -hmm. So setting the world on fire is a metaphor for making a big difference. Right. And if you want to set the world on fire, if you want to make a big difference, sooner or later you have to be able to speak in front of groups. The more that you can be who you are in front of groups, the more comfortable and the more powerful you're going to be at setting the world on fire. Right. And for a Sagittarian, I love that concept. Moon wanna, and Sag, right yeah, here. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you can set the world on fire if you're a fire sign. You can make a big splash if you're a water <laughs> sign. <laughs> you, the sky's the limit for the air signs, and uh, we got to come up with has to do things. with grounding. Yes, for the, you can really be a grounded voice for right. transformation if you're an earth sign. Yes. So, and you can be all of the above because we all have all those in in our chart mm-hmm. somewhere. So it's really just about having fun with it, don't you think? I mean, when it comes right down to it. Well, it is incredibly fun to speak in front of groups once you're opened up. It Mm -hmm. is such... It's a high. It is a high. It Mm -hmm. is an incredible high. Mm -hmm. I I would agree with that. When you know you've got them, Mm -hmm. that's a high. When you know they're with you. I I shouldn't say you've got them. When you know they're with you Mm -hmm. and you can feel that energy How much time do we have? Do we have Um, a minute? Yeah, we have about five. Oh, we've got five minutes. Well, Well, so another another story. Oh, good. Yeah, I hope it's okay. I I tell this one. Uh, I I have a current student named Michelle. Well, don't don't say any names. I'll just just say Michelle. Okay. She uh, came to class last night, night before last, and she was all excited that over the holidays, she had participated in a wedding. She was invited last minute to attend a wedding of a friend because she fit the dress. Oh. And so, so she was in, so the she was wedding. in the wedding. She was in the wedding party, and she was the last one. And everybody, last minute, they ask everybody to speak. So they went down the line, and she said everybody else who talked, nobody was paying attention to them. You know, the people were eating and chattering and laughing. So when they got to her, she did what we had been learning in class. She grounded herself. She got really present. She took a moment to silence herself and look at everybody in the room, and she felt the room quiet down. Mm -hmm. And she spoke for a couple of minutes, and when she was finished... There was applause, and people came up to her. Even the bride's boss came up to her and said, wow. Yay. I just got another spiritual orgasm. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) You should be careful about that on the radio. Oh, no, you know. I, you know, they're limitless. You can't OD on these things. You, know, you just can't. It's just that wave, you know, when you get that that wave. wave Yes. And that's what opens up. 
for you in front of a group that mm-hmm. you can really learn to to ride. Yes, and and that's fun. Mm-hmm. That is fun. Okay, so from your personal experience, because we've got a few minutes left here, and I just love the story. So from your personal experience, what has been your most, one of your most, memorable speaking situations? Oh, you know, the one that pops up is the one where I had to really be vulnerable. And and it was a transformational moment for me. Mm. Years ago, I was a member of the National Speakers Association, the Houston chapter of the NSA. And um, it, it, it was my time to do a 15-minute spotlight speech. And I spent at least a month writing this speech and practicing it. And the night before the speech, like at 2 a.m., I realized I couldn't give that speech because I hadn't written it authentically for me. I'd written it to impress them. And there was nothing to do except between 2 and about 6 a.m. to kind of retool it, to make it be who I am. And when I got there that morning before 7 a.m., I was terrified. I was so scared. I could not believe how scared I was to speak in front of peers. And because I'm, I am who I am and because I transform energy the way I do, I had to tell them. So I got up in front of them, and I said, you know, I wrote a speech. I practiced it, but I have to tell you I can't give that speech because I wrote it to impress you. And so I'm not going to do that this morning. I'm going to talk to you about my work for about 15 minutes. And I talked about my work and I took them through a grounding exercise. And when I was finished, not only did I get a standing ovation, which doesn't happen all the time, but I got a letter from the president saying in all of his time at NSA, he had never experienced that quality of energy at an NSA meeting. Awesome. That's what it'd be all about. It was not necessarily fun, but it was definitely a lesson in in the power of authenticity and the power of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, I, I have a, a format for my show, which is a little different from most from most host because I don't really like to know a lot about my guests before I, before we get on the air mm-hmm. together because I feel like that way I ask the questions of the listeners I'm more likely to ask the question mm-hmm. that the listeners are going to ask mm-hmm. and also and when people t- say to me well they're a little nervous about not knowing what's coming or you know it's like well do you know your business mm-hmm. do you know what you do are you passionate about what you do we're just going to talk about what mm-hmm. you do if if you can't just chat about that, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. No. You know, if so, you can't chat about that, then you need to learn to chat about it. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But, I mean, someone who really had a tremendous fear of not being able to even chat about their business wouldn't come on my show. You know, they they mm-hmm. just probably wouldn't. I've never had it happen anyway. Um, everybody that I've had on the show, once they get going and they get talking about what they do and what they know it usually comes pretty easily well i think that's partly because you're creating the space for that to happen you're staying very present very grounded you're not into this kind of hey we're doing a radio (laughs) you're you're really relaxed into yourself and creating the space for people to relax with you and so then you can ask the right questions that guide them into Mm. sharing well the good the What's so cool is I had the most interesting guests. Well, of course. You know, it, I am just. Everybody's interesting, really. Uh, they are. They are. They are. Everyone is. It, I find people endlessly fascinating. Everyone endlessly. has something to say. Absolutely. And you have said a mouthful today. <gasps> I mean, this is good stuff, really. Thank you. This is very important stuff. I'm real proud because of it. Because it is, it is a big fear for a lot of people. And. That acting for non actors class is sort of sort of the gist of what you do i mean whether whether you 're going to be up speaking in front of people or not, you need to be able to speak well about who you are mm-hmm. even if public speaking isn 't part of your gig, your shtick, whatever mm-hmm. if you 're going to be talking to people at all about who you are and what you do it 's important that you get comfortable with what that is and how to speak. Mm-hmm. You said that it. way. 
And you know what? Like anything else, that takes practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, a little practice, a little critique, a little tweaking, a little conscious thought. Yeah. And that's how we create our lives. So you will be uh, the final speaker on Saturday, Mm -hmm. January 19th at the Metaphysical Healing Expo. Mm -hmm. I'm at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. And I'm going to be doing a demonstration, by the way. I'm going to talk. I have a bunch of stuff, stories to tell. Mm -hmm. But I also am going to do a demonstration of how I guide people through this process of transforming the tension of being the center of attention into a radiant presence so they can be a transformational speaker. Okay. Sandra, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. And I want to thank you all all out there for listening today. This is Peggy Sue Skipper, and you've been listening to the Consciously Curious Goes Global radio show right here on LocalLiveHouston.com. Go visit the website, and while you're there, help keep us on the air with this commercial-free broadcasting by hitting that donate button. Send Jordan some money, honey. Until next week, Peggy Sue Skipper signing off. Get curious about something.